Hey you guys, my name's Cody, and in this video I'm gonna be teaching you a framework so you can edit faster and more effectively using Adobe Lightroom Mobile. Photo editing can get kind of confusing and a little bit overwhelming very quickly, especially if you don't have a process, like a step-by-step -step guide for how you're editing the photos. So it doesn't matter if this is a photo of mountains or a photo of people or a photo of your puppy. If you have a step-by-step -step framework, you'll be able to just put the photo in, go to step one, go to step two, go to step three. So I figured I could put together a quick, simple framework that I use that has been very effective for me that I use on my phone and on my iPad. Okay, so let's get started on my transform. I'm gonna select this photo, and I'm gonna use the crop tool right here. And I like this photo, but you can see there's a lot of space on the right-hand side here, so I'm gonna crop here. I'm gonna use a four by five ratio. Here's the five by four, and I need to rotate it so that it's four by five. So now you can quickly see I'm just going in here and cropping my photo, and I'm gonna make sure that I have a little bit of space on top of my head, and our shoulders are nice and even. You can see the, the fall off round part of our shoulders are kind of even. So I think this looks great. If I needed to level my photo, I could do that here. I can rotate. Okay, this is looking great. And if I wanted to flip the photo horizontally like this, that's great. And if I wanted to flip it vertically, I can also do that here. Okay, so these tools are very helpful when you're transforming or cropping your images. Okay, now step two, we're gonna be moving on to exposure and light. So I can move into the exposure and light tab right here. And now I can see I have exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. You can slide these bars like this and you can get darker, lighter images. You can also, you can reset these buttons. It's, it's good to know that if you get kind of crazy and you have this like wild edit going on here and you're like, oh, I just don't like this. You can just go through, you can tap the word or you can actually tap the slider, the dot on the slider and you can just tap these and they're gonna reset. And now you can see everything is back to zero and I have the original image. So I'm just gonna take the slider and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump this up a little bit because I think we could get a little bit brighter. Here we go, maybe a 0.20, uh, 0.21, that's fine. And I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast. And what the contrast does is it pushes up my highlights and it drops down my shadows. So it pushes that image a little bit uh, wider and then I have a little more contrast. So it looks a little more punchy. Okay, so highlights, I don't need to adjust these highlights. I think the exposure is good there. Shadows, yeah, I think I could bring the shadows up just a little bit. I think this image is kind of bright. And these whites, I think the white is gonna bring the skin tones up too much. So I'll just leave the whites alone. And then the blacks, if I look in those black areas, like especially in my hair right here, yeah, that's looking good, maybe right there. Okay, so as you saw, I just made all of my adjustments to the lights right here. And there's also curves right here. Now curves kind of get a little complicated, but just to quickly show you, the shadows are down in this area and the bright part of the images is up here. So if you see, I take this and drag it down, you can see all the dark areas of my image got even darker. And if I bring this up, all the dark areas got even lighter. So this, you can get some very dramatic effects very quickly. You can also add contrast like this. And very often you'll see professionals using an S curve. So they'll take their shadows and they'll bring them down and also if you touch on the line here, you'll get a, a point that stays in place. So now I'm gonna be creating an S-curve contrast to this entire image. So now I've taken my shadow area here and brought them down, and I've taken my highlight area there and put them up a little bit higher. And now you can see I have a little bit more contrast in my image. Now there is individual red, green, and blue channels right here that I can isolate just the blues. So you can see I took away the blue so we're getting some yellow in the photo. Now I'm gonna add blue and you can see I'm adding blue. I don't want to do that right now, done. Okay, so those are the ways that you can adjust your lighting. If I hold the exposure slider here and then I tap and hold the photo and I bring the photo up, this now this red area here you can see, that's showing me where I've actually lost the information of the pixel. So it's a little bit advanced and actually it doesn't really help me that much but it is kind of a good guide to know that like, okay, that's now I don't have anything overexposed, but if you look at the image, it's totally way too bright. So I'm gonna bring this all the way back down. That looks good. That's exactly where it was before. So here I have before and after, I can just touch and hold the photo. You can see I have before and now I have after. So these are the results. Okay, so step number three is gonna be white balance. 
Now, white balance can get a little tricky pretty quick, and if you don't have little tools like this uh, little white balance card right here, then you're not gonna get perfect white balance. So say you were out on a sunny day and you took a photo, and the photo is very, very warm. It's too warm, there's too much orange, there's too much uh, yellow in the photo. And we can just imitate that real quick. Let me take the temperature right here, this temperature slider and slide it up. And we're gonna imagine that this was the photo that we took outdoors and there's obviously just too, it's just too orange. Unless that's the creative decision I wanted to make, but you can just see that it's too orange. So I'm gonna take this eyedropper right here and I know that in this photo, we were using this white paper backdrop behind us. So if I just take this and drop it onto the wall over here, because I know that that image, that part of the image is white, and you can see automatically it resets my white balance. Did you see that? That's amazing. Okay, so let me try that again. I'm gonna go to my blue temps, and I'm gonna take the eyedropper and I'll just drop it onto the white wall back there again. And look at that, it just cleans my photo right back up. So if you don't have like a white t-shirt or uh, a white part of the image. Don't worry, you can just eyeball this. You don't have to use this tool, so let's put that tool away. And I'm gonna reset the temperature. And what we're looking for is just a nice clean image because our next step, we're gonna move into color, but if our white balance is off and we're starting with an image that looks like this and then we start messing with the color, it's gonna get crazy really fast. So we're just gonna reset this. And actually I know that the white balance on this is pretty clean. I'm gonna maybe um, take a little bit of the magenta out. So let me take this, and here's a cool trick also with these sliders, you can just touch the side and you saw it just went down in an increment of five. So I can just quickly show you, look at this, I'm moving in an increment of five. Rather than trying to do very refined movements with just your finger, just trying to go up one or two, if you know you just need to boost a little bit or take out a little bit, you can just tap, 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 just like this. And again, just tap the button to reset, double tap. Okay, so I think this looks good. Maybe I can take a little bit of the magenta out of there. I think the white balance on this looks great. Step number four is we're gonna go into the color tab, which we are already here because we were just setting our white balance with this tool. Now we're gonna be using these sliders, this wheel, and color grading here to adjust our colors. So already this photo has some good color, but what if I wanted to do something creative with the colors here? Like for example, I want to change the color of the sweatshirts here. Well, if I want to change the color of the sweatshirts, let's see, I could maybe do something in here. I mean, I could boost the color and now I've, I've changed the blue in the sweatshirt, but I've also changed all the other colors involved in the photo. So if I want to just isolate just the blue, I can go up here into the color tab into the color wheels here, and I can isolate just blue. So here's blue, and I'm gonna take the hue and I'm gonna change the hue of the image, of the color. Okay, so let me slide this up, and I'm gonna change this to like a lavender purple. I can add a little bit of saturation, and you can see only the blue is changed into a purple. And I can make this a little bit brighter like that because this is a nice bright image. Maybe a little bit too bright. Let's bring that back down. But I think this is looking really good. So I can see that I've isolated the blue, it did, it did affect our skin tone a little bit, um, but it's not too much. And for a free app, this is pretty good quality. So here I've adjusted it just by isolating the blue. Let me see if I can uh, adjust our skin tones a little bit. I think we're maybe a little bit oversaturated. So let me drop this down just a little bit. That kind of cleans our face tones up. And you can see I'm just isolating just our skin tones there because I've jumped into this orange. I think red also will affect our skin tones. I have a very pink face. This will maybe adjust the lips. You can see our lips going, well, it looks like I have lipstick on. Also, my eyes look crazy now. Anyways, so that's how we can isolate just an image and we can clean up the image just by color by color. You can also go into this and you can target one color. So I'm gonna go to the saturation and I'm gonna put this tool right on the skin tones. And now if I drag up or down, you can see I'm adjusting those skin tones just by sliding my finger. Now what this does is it kind of combines the two colors. You can see I'm using both of these colors right now and adjusting that. So you can even refine the skin tones even more with this tool. Um, I don't end up using this. I kind of will do one channel, one color channel at a time. So let me go back and go back, undo those changes. And I think we're good, okay. Now, if I go out of this, I'm done with these color changes. I'm gonna go now to the grading wheels. I'm not gonna dive into the grading wheels. They're pretty advanced and it takes a long time to learn how to grade. But just in general, um, this wheel will adjust just the shadows of the image. 
this wheel will adjust the mid-tones. But you can kind of see it's going all over the photo. And then this one is gonna adjust the highlights and this one will adjust the whole image. Now that I've got my colors corrected, I've got my skins looking good, I've changed the color of our sweatshirts, I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth into this photo. So I'm gonna just change the color balance now because I know what it looks like. I'm gonna add just a little bit of warmth and make the photo a little bit warmer. I kind of like that. And actually I think I'm gonna bump the magenta back in just a little bit. I think that looks really good. And now if I wanted to make the color pop a little bit more, I could use Vibrance and I can slide this up and back down. You can see what this is doing. It's almost like saturation, but I find the quality of the color actually kind of stays intact when I'm using Vibrance. If I use saturation, for example, uh, it gets crazy very quick. So let me just bump the saturation up and you'll see how crazy, look at our skin, we're, we're at plus 38 now and our skin just looks like crazy. It looks like we got spray on tans and have some crazy makeup on or something. So I'm gonna reset the saturation. I'm always very careful to use saturation. I don't use too much. Okay, so step number five is gonna be adding some effects to the image. So let me jump here into the effects tab. And I right away I see texture, clarity, dehaze, vignette, and then some of these other ones are gray. I can't move these right now. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna use the texture. And what the texture is gonna do is, if we zoom in on my face, for example, uh, you can see I have facial hair right here. So if I use texture and I crank this all the way up, you can see it really makes those facial hairs pop. And it also will make your skin almost look uh, really harsh it's adding contrast to those details and so with the texture i'm always a little bit careful you can also go the opposite way slide this down and you can see we've, i've gotten really soft skin now and my facial hair all those all that detail it goes the opposite way it doesn't add contrast so i'm going to add just a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity and it kind of sharpens up all those details and i think that that looks pretty good Dehaze is actually a tool to use for like if it's a very cloudy day or smoky, you can kind of take dehaze and you can take this and clean up those areas. Finally, here is vignette. So if I zoom all the way out, you'll be able to see what vignetting does. So vignetting is one of those effects that you want to use very subtly. You just want a little bit of vignette and you can also go to the white side, okay? I'm gonna use a little bit of vignette in this image just to darken the corners and draw the viewer's eye into the subject, which is me and my girlfriend right here. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of vignette. And then now you can see these tabs, these bars that were gray earlier and I couldn't slide them. Now I can adjust those. So these are the adjustments for the vignette. So if I crank the vignette up, you'll really be able to see what all of these do. So I'll, let me reset this real quick and I'll show you the midpoint. You can see it's moving in, moving out. So I just want a little bit, maybe about here, Obviously the vignette is too strong, but just to show you, uh, here's the round adjustment and you can kind of see I get different effects there. I think it's good. I just want on the corners right here. Each photo will need a different style. Uh, let me adjust the feather and you can see now I have a really hard line vignette and that might be cool for some images, but for this one, I want it very, very soft, very subtle. So I'm going to go all the way out and then I'm going to go back up to the vignette and I'm going to slowly back it down so I can just barely notice the vignette. And now we'll be able to look at these corners. It's very subtle. I'm just gonna touch the photo before and after, and you can see the vignette has done a great job of drawing the viewer's eye into the image. So again, this is before and after. Okay, so now we're moving on into sharpening and noise reduction. If I want to make the image even more clear and even more sharp, I can slide this up a little bit and it's gonna sharpen up all those little details. For example, you can see like on my eyebrows here, I'm gonna sharpen that image, but you can see it kind of takes the pixels and gives them contrast. And it's if it's too much, it's very obvious and it kind of looks bad. You can really see on my skin, it's, it's looking not so great, especially on my nose right here. You can really see those pixels have, have been affected by this too much. So just a little bit. And now we're gonna move into noise reduction. So noise reduction is a great tool, but I think some people use it too much sometimes. So if I had maybe a darker image and there was a lot of noise in the shadows, say on this side of my face, where there might be some noise or like right in this area, this is a dark area. I've brightened the image, but I can still see some noise. Noise is kind of like grain, but you don't want it. You want to take that out. I'm going to try to isolate that noise and try to take it and reduce it. And what the noise reduction does is it will smooth those pixels out. 
But you gotta be careful because if you add too much noise reduction, it's going to smooth out all of the skin. It's gonna smooth the entire image, which is taking away that contrast and taking away that sharpening effect that we just added. So again, very subtle with the noise reduction. And I find that if you use color noise reduction, a lot of times that will work a little more effectively than just noise reduction. Okay, so as you can see, this framework I used, a step-by-step -step process to be able to get awesome, clean results. You can really see this image has changed quite a bit. We got nice, clean results. Even from the beginning, this is a clean photo, but now I really like the before and after. Look at this, we've changed the color of the sweatshirts. We have more contrast. Everything's looking nice and warm, cute. Awesome, thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.